participants and uh, I would like to uh, thank the organizers for uh, having me here as uh, one of the resource person. And I would like to thank uh, uh, the correspondent and the secretary advocate uh, Raju Turek. And also like to thank the uh, principal Dr. K. Paul Raj. Uh, then the convener Dr. S. Uh, Sam from those head of the department. Then I would like to thank the organizing secretary Dr. Jamal uh, for his invitation and uh, regular encouragement. He's one of my mentor actually on uh, doing my uh, professional and uh, as well as educational growth. So I would like to especially thank Dr. Jebba Milmin uh, for having me here. And also thank uh, uh, all the committee members uh, for organizing this successful Zoom meeting. And uh, we are in a very uh, the different atmosphere and the situation where uh, the global uh, uh, is having a pandemic situation where everybody is panic and the business are falling down and uh, the people have uh, no uh, like uh, road path where it will lead to uh, next level. Therefore, uh, the topic which we choose, the business resilience and uh, COVID-19 crisis, a cross-cultural experience, which is really a good uh, motive topic at this moment to know and understand where the uh, business will uh, lead to uh, either during the crisis or after the crisis. And uh, I'd like to uh, thank Dr. John Manuraj also for his uh, wonderful uh, presentation. And uh, he has given us very insights about the agriculture sector and really is based on his experience. He has presented very successful and very thoughtful uh, presentation today. I'd like to thank Dr. Manaraj also for that. And I'd like to thank uh, uh, Mr. Jake Moore for his uh, next presentation. I would like to congratulate him on this. And uh, I would like to uh, give a brief information and my presentation is will be based on uh, how the business resilience during this pandemic of COVID-19 crisis, the hospitality industry, how it will take to the uh, next level. The hospitality industry uh, is uh, consists of lodging, food and drinks, travel and tourism, and the recreation and entertainment facilities. Just the recreation and the entertainment facilities also, which are connected to uh, the air travel and the tourism. So when uh, this sector like lodging, bed and breakfast, the hotels, motels, all these sectors, which is also connected with the food and drinks, where when the people are traveling, when they go have uh, like to, to have uh, the different kind of food, and also uh, the travel and tourism sector, which is very vast, and also it is connecting, interconnecting each country, where the, uh, the tourism is more successful because of this airline connectivity. And also, based on that, there are many other operators also, they are doing their businesses and people are traveling and ease of doing their business because of less time to travel to their destinations. And uh, recreation and the entertainment facilities also is benefited from that. But today, the situation is completely to the vice versa. What happened when the air to travel, uh, like the air travel is uh, disconnected, the people are unable to travel to different uh, destinations. Therefore, the people are not available to stay in the hotels and uh, the resorts, other service departments or time sharing apartments. Therefore, these businesses are during this pandemic are very much affected. And also when the people are traveling abroad, when they stay in the hotels, they won't take the, uh, the food from the same hotels or the nearby. They go to the different uh, locations, neighbor, near, nearby area, then they will taste the food which is more uh, specific or signature to the particular destination, which is also is being affected. And also the zoos, museums, all this uh, sports sector, which are all been uh, like affected due to, this, uh, due to this pandemic because of the travel restrictions, unavailability of the uh, visitors to the countries. And the, the pandemic is first time like within this uh, 100 years, like the last pandemic the level has happened in the year 1918, the blue uh, flu pandemic. So almost 100 years later, which is like almost uh, two plus uh, generations, we are experiencing experiencing to this new kind of situation where we need to adapt and the business need to adapt, the organization need to adapt 
they need to rethink the situation how they could be more resilient to overcome from this instead of spoiling the business instead of the spoiling the relation with the customer instead of spoiling the relation of the business entities and uh, like the pandemic is making crossing the level and it is also not flattening immediately which is crossing now 10 million cases and 500 plus people have died so far and which is making more challenge to the the economic sector, businesses, environmental, social, technological. So there are challenges and opportunities and still people are facing more on the challenges. Therefore, the opportunities are being discovered, being uh, like uh, they want to uh, take this opportunity from the challenges. So people are getting to know a little bit to adapt to those. And there are stakeholders to help like communities, government, business and individuals. Like they help each other like when the government help to the banking sector, banking sector help to the uh, the companies in terms of loan, in terms of other measures. So therefore, so this is all being interconnected. When the government is making some kind of support system in terms of finance, in terms of other uh, like uh, other sources, so it makes more uh, the companies, the stakeholders more resilient to the COVID-19. And there are major worries, uh, worries actually for the uh, during this pandemic because uh, it's clearly indication of it's a recession. So it's the recession, how long, how how extended it is going to be. It's kind of uh, like unknown situation where the people are very much unaware of the how the recession is still going to be affected. It's a prolonged global uh, recession in the global economy, and there are. Uh, the companies uh, they they already going like shutting down the big companies like uh, airlines or the other big firms they are announcing their uh, bankruptcies actually yesterday also there are few uh, fnb like chain business has been announced like pizza Head, they were announcing the uh, bankruptcies and when the opportunities arise for the it sector the, the people are using like we are using zoom meeting today and there are people are using different kind of uh, channels to communicate and the people are at home, at the office, at their uh, educational institutions, uh, come, uh, like uh, the colleges, they are more adopting the, uh, the technologies to communicate, to uh, make the education uh, to the students. So therefore, the system is not more resilient to the cyber attacks. So there is a, there are also data fraud from like kind of uh, like the people are stealing the data and they're trying to manipulate the things and steal the money, steal the different uh, data to, to use their own benefits. Therefore, like uh, this situation, people need to think about more resilience on those and also uh, the disruption on the global supply chain. Therefore, where it is being produced, the things are like accumulating over there and which is not uh, moving to the uh, other destination due to the cross-border movement. And also, the the second wave the uh, the second another global outer which is also even recently in china they have also shut down few like locked down few areas where the second wave of covid 19 started so uh, in this pandemic since the recession is started it is not only affecting you for example the the financial crisis the year 2008-9 it has affected few sectors and uh, especially the advanced economies they were uh, doing little bit worse and the emerging economies they were doing little bit better than the advanced economies but today the situation is everybody is affected even the advanced advanced economies are more affected and the emerging markets are even affected so therefore it is weakening the physical position of the the the, the countries and also sharp inflation uh, sharp increase on the inflation so on the projection that uh, international monetary the imf has projected on the global economy it will contradict to 4.9 percentage than the last year 2.9 percentage so it's almost like eight percentage to the negative growth so it's really going to be a big uh, big uh, challenges to all the sectors so as i mentioned like the advanced economies are going to be more affected which is like estimated as of uh, last month june like uh, minus eight percentage and also uh, the emerging, uh, the developing economies like India, China, and Saudi Arabia. And see, these are the emerging markets or developing economies. They are also uh, going to be affected like more than minus uh, 3%, so which is contradicting almost 6 plus percentage. So 
so it is a uh, going to have more challenges to all the sector especially we will have a look on the hospitality sector which other how it going to be affected and how it will be uh, to become more resilient to this uh, issue and uh, the hospitality industry will face the challenge like which is estimated it is it will be more than what the industry has faced the financial crisis in 2008 which is more like will be more heavier than this land level and or saws or financial crisis of 2008 see the global airlines which are estimating the 880 billion loss it's accumulated loss actually so it's a overall loss going to be 880 billion and due to this pandemic there are many hotels they are permanently shutting down since the uh, the guests are not available the businesses are not coming to the countries so they have no business they have operating or they have to pay the rent therefore they have to they have no other choices actually to run the, uh, the rent the properties so they have therefore they have to shut down permanently or temporarily at least till the international flights operate so therefore they have to Uh, either temporarily or permanently, they have to shut down in order to sustain on their business. Actually, and the restaurants also are allowed to take a takeaway orders. Therefore, they are only to the limited because the takeaway orders are very limited, and the people are very, very, very fearful to take the food from outside. So, they are uh, the restaurant business also they have very thin business out of the whole uh, business to before the pandemic. and in travel and tourism sector is yes it's estimated almost 50 million jobs globally it is going to be affected on an average immediately and it will take almost 10 months to recover from this so it's a it's a complete shutdown on as well as the recreation and entertainment facilities so therefore the people are most of them they have lost their job and the entertainment facilities they have very huge operational expenses and fixed uh, expenses to run their operation therefore it is very much difficult for them to continue in their business so it is it's a big challenge actually to the hospitality sector in terms of their revenue in terms of their operation in terms of their retaining their uh, the the good talented individuals so it is very hard for them actually to recover so let us like also have a look on the aviation sector how the pandemic has affected the aviation sector and how it is during this process is going to be so in the current year it's as i mentioned earlier the global accumulated loss which is 880 billion dollar which is estimated during the current pandemic in the industry almost 113 uh, billion dollars so that will be very much difficult for them to manage and there are even recently rainer has announced already the bankruptcies so like there are many even uh, like recently on the emirates airline has announced more than 800 people layoff and also uh, now presently only the uh, the airways are running like only the chartered flights or the uh, the vande bharat mission or the like people to shift from the country on uh, pandemic basis so which is also very much affecting and also leading to the big loss to the aviation industry and they have little bit of breathing on the cargo because the cargo business is doing little bit than the uh, the passenger transport so till it is they are very much like uh, less by 27 percentage annually on an average but still they have little breathing on the cargo which is uh, like transiting the uh, mm -hmm. either the pp or any other medicines or other essential commodities between the countries where it is being produced where it is being consumed and uh, as of now more than 80 to 90 percentage of flights has been cancelled and uh, which are not running See, at the same time these flights are being run by the companies on an either operating lease or the financial lease so therefore uh, there are certain uh, period they have to pay the lease charges so it is very difficult for the uh, the aviation to uh, like to continue their business and to pay the uh, like fixed operational charges and uh, the last year it was almost only the thin point of 3 percentage Uh, profit they have uh, earned from the total revenue so which is almost 26 uh, billion so it is it is very thin margin they have 3 percentage so it is during this pandemic they will have heavy loss so it is very difficult for them to sustain and so therefore the 2020 will be not be bearable to them so they have to adopt a different way of sustaining this, their business and they need to bring the passenger confidence in order to sustain their business or bring back their business so based on the the survey which iatr did in the uh, the current month actually uh, 
uh, in actually two days back in June they announced. Uh, see, there are many people, more than uh, like uh, ten plus, like fourteen, thirteen percentage of people, they don't want to travel at all, which is like from twenty-two percentage to come down. Like people were thinking almost like twenty-two percentage they would travel in February, which come down to fifteen, uh, like fourteen percentage in April, and again it is coming falling down to. Uh, in june actually to like 11 12 percentage if you if you see the people perception on like uh, their travel between like uh, to next to one or two months which is like almost they are ex expecting only 33 percentage it's like which is falling down from like almost 47 percentage to 33 it's all uh, decreasing the the passenger confidence are decreasing actually so therefore and also the people uh, who expect to wait more than six months to travel, which is increasing. So therefore, there is immediate, there is no immediate uh, solution for the airlines actually. Therefore, uh, the airlines has to work to bring the uh, passenger confidence, and also like uh, people wait for uh, more than one year to travel, which is uh, increasing as well as the, the six percentage than the April survey. So it is, it is ultimate aim of all the airlines to bring the passenger confidence. So in order to sustain. Uh, from this COVID-19 uh, issue, and also their estimated loss in 2020 and 2021, which is estimated. These are the graph from 2000 to uh, like 2020, which is the, like uh, estimated in 2020, which will fall down to minus 23 percentage the margin because of their uh, the operating operational uh, fixed and the semi fixed cost. Then, uh, though they have the uh, cargo business which is doing less 27 percentage than the previous year, so therefore still uh, they are not able to sustain or meet the, uh, the last year uh, revenue pattern. So it may in, like go up little bit in 2000, uh, 2021, which is estimated uh, minus still minus 4.2 percentage. So which is contradicting from uh, like uh, 2019 the profit figure to the. Uh, negative even after two, uh, two thousand, like in 2021. So therefore, I'll, at least three to four years, the the, uh, the aviation industry will uh, come up to cope up on these uh, losses. And also, they have to adapt to bring the confidence on the people. Actually, there are a few compulsory measures they have to take, like a mandatory uh, mask and the temperature checks and hygiene. See, they are going to adapt the pre-check-in. It's not uh, like usually the people go to the airport make the check-in. And that they are going to strictly avoid the pre-check-in at their like different destinations, so the people they can avoid queuing the people for the the check-in process. And also, them the, they are going to adopt the cashless payments even during the flight. So the people who anything they purchase during the flight, they will adopt the cashless payment. So the contrary, like connecting the people, people between the people to people, so it can be uh, reduced. So therefore, the the, the outrage of COVID can be reduced. So they are going to avoid the queuing and also the fast track priority boarding they are going to adopt with the self-service. And in order to reduce the queuing, they are going to make uh, limiting the uh, trolley services. And also they have to make the aircraft sanitation on uh, each and every trip. So these are the information they are going to make a public uh, scenario where what are the uh, chemicals they use, how they are making the sanitation, and how the see the people are very much pandemic to board the flight even so therefore they have to bring the confidence among the people to adapt on the air travel with a full confidence therefore they are having the confidence on like if they are traveling they will not have any uh, like uh, the chance of getting the covid 19 so that is the reason the uh, many airlines are going to adapt to the help of filters where it is also like replacing the air within uh, three to four uh, minutes enter the 100 percent of the uh, air inside the airplane. So therefore, any contamination on the air can be replaced and also the fresh air can be produced by these uh, filters. So these are the additional measures which the airlines has to take and also uh, educate to the public and also they have to adapt to the new challenges and uh, to reduce their operational expenses and uh, some companies, they may own their own uh, airlines, the fleet of airlines. It may bring them also on uh, more of uh, uh, the maintenance cost. So, which is also going to be another challenge for the airlines to adapt. So, therefore, it is very much critical as well as 
opportunity of situations where they can uh, they can also like adapt to the new challenges so they can create more revenue and sustain on this so to be more resilient on this situation and also see every uh, in hospitality sector every sector is interconnected when the airline is travel is affected automatically the tours activities also uh, affected when the airline is not operating automatically the other sector also not operating like for example when the airline is not able to operate the tours and travel activities completely shut down the whole sector was valued for in 2019 as 254 billion dollar out of which 1 million operators are small scale levels the 1 million operators they are doing their business like almost 86% of the operators is doing the business less than 250000 dollars so that means today their business is nil because nobody is buying the uh, airline ticket nobody is going to buy the uh, the holiday packages therefore it is very much difficult situation for them today run there i have i have also uh, listening to many of my uh, colleagues from the industry or the known friends from the industry many of the travel agencies they are shutting down except few uh, the tra direct travel agencies who are operated by the airlines who are uh, selling the uh, the chartered flight tickets or uh, like uh, the flight for uh, the airlines which are operating those only they are uh, they are they are opening today because all other airlines which is connected with by the gds system through different tour operators which are not operating today therefore the small scale business is, will be very much affected so 28% of the operators has risk of closing down within 3 months and 46% of them within next 6 months so the small scale operators are very much affected due to this uh, covid 19 and also because of this uh, shutting down operation on the air travel so therefore it is an average year on year decline in bookings is 52 percentage which is partially like more than 37 percent is where on cancellation almost like nil bookings i would say and also uh, the tour activities are being affected uh, because of many many things are adapted to this because the people who have uh, like need to travel to other countries they should uh, get the uh, visit visa to travel which is uh, being uh, cancelled on uh, many countries so the 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 global tourism which is 10% of gdp which is uh, very much affected and also 60 to 80% decline in tourism economy on this uh, 2020 uh, therefore uh, when the visa is being not issued from the countries it is being stopped so the tours operators are unable to arrange any destination bookings or resort travel and also people are very much fearful to travel because of the quarantine like for example uh, if they travel between a country they have to uh, first they have to make a test on their distance of the travel then they should produce the before the uh, travel started they should produce the negative uh, covid certificate then they can board the flight if they have the uh, valid visa on the destination or they are the resident to the particular uh, country then they are also being quarantined like some they adopt to 7 days some they adopt to 14 days quarantine some they ask to uh, like different kind of quarantine almost 14 ranging from 14 to 28 days so therefore people are very much reluctant to travel there are many challenges therefore this also affecting the uh, tourism uh, the tourist operators and the related activities so now uh, like uh, since the airline travel is very much affected there is a new opportunities arriving so say like uh, the domestic tourism uh, therefore in india i have i heard like like uh, uh, the the government also the tourism department were uh, making the program to improve the domestic tourism than the uh, outside tourism like the international travel so now it's a uh, it's a clear opportunity for the domestic uh, tourism to uh, gain the momentum because always the people are very much reluctant to travel between the countries on the aircraft because they feel that un un like unsafe to travel because the people are closely sitting each other and also uh, they like uh, it's a very difficult to get the visa from the particular destination country they have to produce number of documents therefore it's a it's a huge opportunity for the domestic tourism so the people can travel like for example the family can travel by their own car and also uh, they can adapt to the 
to the limited people which don't need to each other they can take a, uh, the bus they can travel to the nearby destinations so it's an opportunity for the domestic tourism than the international tourism so the tour operators or the transport companies need to adapt in a different way how they are going to have the domestic tourism in their priority priority business so it is also uh, the moment like this all can happen once the the curves are flattened on the covid 19 like only then see, we are now when the, the curves are going up due to this covid 19 which are very limited like nobody expect to travel we have the government itself they will ask them to stay at home so therefore there is no chance of travel as of now but after the pandemic like after the curves down so there is a huge opportunity are arriving so therefore the operators the air like the domestic airlines can prefer even like to transit the passengers where especially in india their distances are a little far away so they can adapt so to uh, like the local uh, aircraft to be ready for those so it's a huge opportunity for the domestic tourism and also uh, the the domestic tourism to revive from this uh, the it is estimated the domestic tourism will recover more quickly after that uh, travel restrictions so to restore the traveler confidence uh, even the domestic tourist sector they have to adapt to the new health protocol like for example anyway the people who travel one place to the other place they have to live in a uh, the hotel and they have to feel safe at home so therefore uh, the hotel has to make sure that and also it is visible to the guests like what kind of safety measures they have taken in order to avoid or uh, like avoid the contradicting to covid 19 how they are very much secure the properties are and their local uh, travel how they will keep their safe distancing and how they adapt to the technology where the human to human uh, the interference is not not very much available so therefore it is it is very much important for them actually to keep this uh, keep updated on the safety protocol and they can diversify uh, their markets and they need to provide all information to via app so they may ship to the domestic tourism on this uh, after the, uh, the global pandemic and also to the transport sector it is very much a challenging situation like uh, due to the uh, the visitor and the worker safety like uh, especially the uh, the taxis and the other uh, related transport system like uh, the people are very limited for example in the taxi more than 200 people are not allowed and uh, including the driver is free actually it is also a different situation uh, and also uh, the people who uh, remember, uh, the bus what they are operating also they need to maintain each person uh, each plus, uh, from the two shipment which are uh, in the sea which like uh, in the earlier beginning, beginning of the pandemic they were not allowed to uh, disembark which is leading to the uh, leading to the uh, covid 19 to, to spread inside the food Actually, it was very much a difficult situation for them. Actually, they have to pause some time to, uh, to come out from this because they need to uh, make sure that their facilities are good for the people to travel. And also, there are loss on bookings for those sectors who are connected to these, uh, these business, for example, who make the cruise booking. Because the tour operators are mainly depends on these kind of allied activities, actually, air ticket booking and cruise booking and uh, other kind of activities during the destination travels. <laughs> and also in terms of railways and metro now and also this is this is also uh, the the country which are also having the huge spike in the cases they have limited the moment which are operating when the, uh, the restriction was limited uh, the pandemic it is going down from the hike so they are also operating on the railway and metro which they are adapting each seat person and also they are disinfecting the every uh, metro tram uh, and the railway on every trip and also they are washing the, uh, like uh, clothes or anything they are providing for the long travel so it is significantly very important for them actually to keep the railways and metro and the tram to be more safe and more like uh, to be more communicative to the travelers 
how they are uh, making sure uh, every travel is more safe for the uh, passengers and also we have seen the aviation sector and the transportation all and also tours and operators significantly uh, once the uh, aircraft like air travel is affected it's uh, being affected on the hotel sector the, the hotel apartment or hotel or uh, let's say uh, different kind of properties uh, which are doing like giving the opportunity for the staycations to the guests which are traveling from different countries it's like a uh, home away from home the people who are traveling to another destination they feel to be at home when they are uh, staying at a hotel but today that uh, the hotel industry is very much affected the revenues uh, fall down to 67% 65% is on an average but at the same time uh, i have seen myself the hotel some like many hotels i would say that it's a rented properties uh, which are already uh, shut down the properties the hotels which are owned by companies the owned by the direct owner which they are not required to the pay the rent they are running the apartment either uh, like uh, on a limited scale of uh, staff and they are uh, making sure that like whoever is staying in the apartment they are not affected by uh, the pandemic and they feel more secure and because especially when the when the hotel occupancy is limited to 20 30 percentage uh, they have to reduce the staff in order to sustain on their business they have to avoid the expenses if anything is similar to uh, fixed nature or the variable nature they have to look at that what kind of expenses they can avoid so today the hotel apartments or hotels having only 75 to uh, like 80 uh, percentage of downfall so maybe the rest of 20 to 25 percentage of the occupancy available and also they are uh, uh, making sure that if anybody is booking their cancellation charge is not be collected before the pandemic anybody book one day charge has to pay the first day if anybody is no show it's called no show if somebody is uh, not staying like not coming to the hotel to check in once they book their payment is not refundable for the first day of the stay unless it is a i mean uh, non refundable book if the refundable booking the one day has to pay so which the people are cancelling and uh, on an average their average daily rate and uh, per available room rates are coming down so therefore uh, it's very difficult for the hotel industry to run and uh, also the people are in the shared accommodation like uh, what happened like in the uh, people when they are traveling they are also like hotel and hotel apartment where the family stay or the individuals who can afford to stay they are uh, staying in the hotel or hotel apartment where there is there are people who travel also or stay and study they are uh, they are having the shared accommodation so even due to the pandemic either student or go worry sharing the accommodation today they are not willing to share the accommodation because of uh, the fear on the covid 19 contraction so therefore it is also affected due to this and the holiday resorts like uh, uh, people who are not available to travel between the countries due to the aircraft i mean the airlines shut down and they are like uh, at the beginning like they were summer offer they were closed down those offer and now they are talking about their the winter offer which is early uh, celebration of those and also restaurant they are going to adopt like uh, the social distancing and where they were making only the deliveries maybe once they open also they will have like like uh, the space between the tables where they can uh, feel safe for the customers and due to this pandemic the uh, industry also affected very much the billion of people on the jobless so if you look at the current occupancy level which is uh, in uh, europe it is uh, like 24 percentage and also which is in uh, like uh, united state which is 40 percentage and uh, china which is uh, 52 and the middle east it is uh, 36 percentage so there are seven steps of recovery uh, which the hotels has to adopt and uh, they have to reconsider their existing health and uh, safety measures use the time this time when they are uh, closed down they have to make sure that the hotels maintenance or any re renovation to be done on uh, this time so therefore they will not lose the opportunity when the travels travels are available so and also they have to review immediately on their financial where the operating cost can be uh, reduced 
and where their unnecessary, unnecessary expenses can be uh, bring down brought down actually so therefore they have to adapt to the revenue management model and also update their distribution channel where uh, their exposure exposure is to the limited countries they have to increase the number of countries and the destination to their exposure and they have to also make sure that they communicate how they uh, have how they are also making sure the hotel is uh, feel safe for the guests who are all coming and similarly uh, in the hospital sector there are other few uh, allied sector also affected like business uh -huh. and the travel then the cultural yeah. and the sports entertainment uh, also like a travel and technology company since the uh, people are not traveling for the meetings or the events like participatory sports or the other sports which are not happening now and the olympics also they have stopped so therefore it is now today the industry is very much down and going forward i feel that like uh, once the airline started to operate the restriction is uh, limited and the visa process being issued so, uh, everything will come to the normal and till then the companies has to adapt to the uh, domestic uh, travel and uh, for surviving and to be resilient on this uh, covid 19 the industry has to adapt to the different uh, perspective or different experiences they may face in the future like the new customer experience new customer perception and uh, consumption patterns for example uh, the customer experience they, they have to feel safe when they are coming to the property and they, so they have to uh, make sure that we are adapted to the safety techniques and the policies of the hotel need to be changed as i as i mentioned like booking cancellations Uh, need to be adopted, and also switch to the customers. Like customer will pay more attention on the safety, uh, so we have to adapt to this. And also the customer pattern. Like people will not be available uh, on uh, direct uh, uh, visit to the hotel, and they will try to book online. Before there are walk-ins, they come to the hotel, make a booking, and go, and they will come to the property. And so this need to be adopted in a long distance where they go to the cloud system and make the booking. therefore adapting to this new situation and changing the uh, like uh, changing the travel experience to uh, from international to the domestic and also to adapt to the new customer perception and their consumption pattern uh, the business can be more resilient uh, from this covid 19 and uh, therefore i would like to uh, i hope that i have uh, given my uh, thoughtful information to all of you the participants and uh, i thank for the uh, the management of uh, uh, like department of studies and uh, the nncc college for the opportunity